Okay, so it's Wednesdays, and you know what that means. It's time for the news of the week. And despite the fact that you can see there's some empty spaces here on the bottom of the board, don't let this distract you the fact that there wasn't a whole ton of news. There's actually a whole bunch of news that just happened in the last seven days. And the reason why there was a little bit of an empty gap is because of the fact that I thought there was so many news and that I couldn't fit on the board, I had to write the word very, very small. So, yeah, that's why... There end up to be a lot of space in the bottom but without further ado let's get into the news that happened in the last seven days and we start off with something that might be too good to be true nycfc is expected to make a stadium announcement soon so after all this year of how we make fun of yankee stadium and basically even players making fun of Yankee Stadium by basically doing the home run celebration every time they score a goal and we always make a lot of jokes a lot of memes about NYCFC and their stadium situation and how Yankee Stadium is just like a Bush League kind of stadium is this finally the time where we are unfortunately not going to make that joke and if it's the case I'm kind of sad about it because you know, I always love to make jokes about Yankee Stadium being an MLS soccer stadium and that every time when I see players slides down, especially near, near second base, I always say, yeah, that player basically gets through second base and he, of course, is safe. Oh, wait, that's the wrong sports, unfortunately. But all kidding aside, you know, this is definitely a good news for a lot of fans, not just NYCFC supporter, but certainly in general for MLS fans. Because if you ever seen uh, NYCFC game, and obviously, besides the national broadcast game, I even see like the local broadcast game. And let me just say, it is just, it's an absolute eyesore whenever I watch an NYCFC game when they play at Yankee Stadium. Uh, not only the camera angle is absolutely awful, but even when they do the national broadcast, and I know back in one of the playoff games, from last year against the union they literally have wire that goes through the broadcast and it's like really seeing wires go through as the players player basically play on the pitch i mean i know they had terrible camera angle but seeing seeing cable that kind of cross throughout your screen that is just an absolute joke and you know one of the other thing that i also say about this news is that the key word in this news is the word soon and when they say soon i don't know exactly what the timeline is they didn't specifically told us what exactly the timeline is hopefully this is not something that is going to be similar to the inter miami stadium situation where uh, i remember how david beckham talked about how they're going to get a stadium soon and it took a long time before they kind of finally figure it out so hopefully nycfc doesn't make doesn't wait another five years until they make their announcement that hey we're going to eventually build a stadium somewhere else and that we are finally going to be leaving yankee stadium and they also specifically said that they are expecting to find their permanent home which means that most likely they're not playing at yankee stadium anymore and i think everybody that is an mls fan and also the support Order, or even the players they're probably happy the fact that they're finally moving out of yankee stadium i mean it's not just the fans that is not ha that do not like yankee stadium as a stadium to play soccer i mean it's a great stadium for baseball but that's what it was designed it wasn't designed for like soccer kind of games and you know the players they also kind of complain about how the field is just being way too small and also the pitch is absolutely god awful. An example of that was their home opener where that grass was just brown. Like, I've never seen a game in MLS where the grass is basically brown. It looked like some kind of Norwegian second league kind of game that I was watching with the way the grass was kind of kind of brown. I mean, that is just absolutely unacceptable. Uh, but moving on, speaking of NYCFC and staying with NYCFC... They're also nearing a deal to sign Brazilian forward Herber from a Croatian club in the Croatian League via TAM. And this is something that, if you remember all the way back in the offseason, I talked about how they were going to get a striker from Legia Warsaw uh, alongside with the Matrita deal. Now, the Matrita deal, of course, eventually went through, but the Legia Warsaw striker that they were trying to get, that move kind of broke down. 
So it's going to be interesting to see if they are going to get him. Um, I think Dormai Torn has said that he wants to have another another four on this team. And I believe, from what I heard, Herber actually plays in that similar role as Matrita plays. So I think Matrita is still going to be in the starting 11 because he's a DP. And unless you are a club that just just have god awful management you should not put your dp on the bench and put your tam player as your starter unless if that tam player of course is outperforming that dp player which we don't know if herbert is going to do that um but next up uh nico gaitan has been acquired by the chicago fire so if you guys remember who nico gaitan is he was a guy that that used to play for Benfica for a long time and then he also went to Atletico Madrid where he wasn't really a regular starter but he was still he was still with Atletico Madrid and still got minutes with that club but obviously he decided to go to the Chinese Super League and now he's going to be coming to MLS as the Fire of course acquire him from the Chinese Super League and they said it's apparently on a free deal so they didn't actually need spend any money well actually they technically did they actually gave seattle 50,000 tam in terms of the controversial discovery right rule that mos had and you know it's another attacker that they're adding and I, i've been saying for the fire the reason why they are not doing very well in the league is not because of the attack it's because of the defense and with the way that they just keep overloading the attack it, it makes me wonder why are they need keep needing to do that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Gaetan, I think, is a good, good, decent picked up. Although he is already 31 years old, so he's kind of like in a little bit of a decline. But still, you know, he's definitely a decent piece on the attacking end, and most likely he would be taking that starting row. And that Georgi Mihailovic will unfortunately once again drop down into the pecking order and into the bench row. Um, but still, I feel like Chicago could have used that that money. Well, they could have used that international spot or even used that some money to maybe get a defender. I mean, they basically just wasted an international spot and wasted in terms of the the cap some of the cap space that they have just because they want to get Nico Gaetan. Um, but next up, the Galaxy. So they are looking to acquire another defender. I know the Galaxy are just trying very hard right now to look for defender, which I don't blame them considering that was the big issue that they had last season. And it's the only issue why they're not one of the best team in the league. And they apparently are looking to go to Serie A and looking to get Bologna defender Giancarlo Gonzalez. And, you know, obviously... They already got Diego Palanta in the offseason, although Palanta has definitely not live up to what they expected him. Um, and I wouldn't say he, he was a terrible signing right now because it's only been three games. But during that time, he gave up a penalty and also was 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 one of the reason why one of the or actually in the opening game, he basically made a bad back pass and was one of the reasons why the Galaxy can see that first goal against the Chicago Fire. But again, it's still very early to judge and say Diego Palanta is a waste of money that the Galaxy just tried to sign defender. But it's also clear that they are desperate. The fact that, you know, if Palanta does not work out, they need to maybe get another defender in order to basically stabilize that de defense. I think the defense for the Galaxy this year is... I wouldn't say it has has improved dramatically, but it has shown sh signs of improvement. But then there are also is signs of the same defense from last year. Uh, but next up, um, Jason Christ has named the new U.S. Under Twenty Three coach. This was announcement that just made today, and honestly, I I don't really like this signing. And you know, Jason Christ, I know what he did with RSL back in 2009 when he of course win them the cup but ever since he has coached nycfc and with orlando city it has not looked good and i'm not saying that you, i'm not saying that he cannot be successful when he is going with the u23 team and you know coaching youngster is definitely different than coaching just an mos team especially if the mos team that you're coaching doesn't really kind of promote in terms of bringing guys from the academy uh but i feel like 
I feel like this. I feel like the 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 U.S. Soccer Federation could have maybe look into a couple. If they're gonna look for MLS team, at least look for teams that have manager that maybe are are with teams that really believe in the academy. So guys like Chris Armas and Mike Pecky, two teams that that are are teams that really kind of believe in the academy and really believe in some youth movement. And those are the guy, guys that probably would be better fit in terms of the U23 coach. But then again, Jason Christ can always prove me wrong. And it will be interesting to see, first of all, how is he going to bring this team into the Olympics? Because the whole purpose of the U23 team is basically try to get into the Olympics and maybe do something during that time. Because the U.S. have not been in the Olympics for a long time now and I'm not saying the Olympics is anything like the World Cup but it would be nice to see our U23 team and it would be nice to see a team that certainly will have a lot of potential future US men's national team senior squad that is going to be be moving up into the senior road and be successful and with Jason Christ I don't know about that um, but next up Wayne Rooney, so he won the MLS Player of the Week, which is no surprise because he got a hat trick and an assist. I mean, anytime you get a hat trick, it's usually an automatic Player of the Week award that you won. Unless if there's another player that score a hat trick, and then maybe there's kind of like a little bit of debate of who exactly deserved the Player of the Week. But I don't think, I don't think we had an instant where there's at least two players that score a hat trick in the same week and there's a discussion of who is going to be player of the week um but like i said wayne rooney will really deserve in terms of this player of the week i mean as soon as he scored that hat trick we knew that he's going to win player of the week no matter what's going to happen in the other games um but yeah next up alfonso davies scored his first ever goal with Bayern munich this this weekend um so he actually scored the final goal that that um in that game between Bayern and Mainz and even though you know it was a sixth goal and it really kind of was in some way kind of meaningless for Bayern because they were they were going to win that game either way they were blowing out Mainz it's always good to see a former MLS player and even though he's not American he's a can Canadian kind of player I know that there's some people kind of confused the fact that he's an American player even though he is Canadian um, but it's always good to see a former MLS kind of product score in a a top 10 kind of team that is Bayern Munich and one of the thing that I also have heard about him is that he's been getting a lot of minutes with Bayern Munich and Bayern Munich is not a club that is known for giving young guys a lot ton of minutes and just you know hopefully he can be developed and maybe starting eventually could be in the starting 11 um but yeah it's good to see that davies is definitely get, getting a lot of minutes and keep in mind people thought originally when he went to Bayern munich it was a big mistake because you know when you're a youngster i know you want to go to the big club i know you want to go to like clubs like Bayern or barcelona or even real madrid but when you're a youngster it's kind of best to try to maybe go into the teams that usually are are very good in terms of developing youth so teams like Borussia Dortmund, Ajax, uh, Benfica or even all the Portuguese team those are the teams that usually youngsters would join if they want to to eventually later on join a big team and it's kind of interesting the fact that he decided to take a big step but it doesn't seem like he is really kind of you know he's he's under a lot of pressure when he is with Bayern but it doesn't seem like that pressure has really got to him, which just it it just shows you how good Alfonso Davies really is. Not just when he was with the White Cast, but now really showing that he could be really a a big deal. And in some way, I'm kind of also disappointed the fact that he's not American and that he is Canadian. But still, maybe he could be the answer for the Canadian national team that is certainly on. The rise and i have a feeling that they could potentially compete with the u.s mexico or costa rica the the big three that is in concacaf but we shall see um next up 
Uh, Kaku. So, apparently this saga between Kaku and the Red Bulls just never has an ending. Because apparently there is another news developing in terms of this saga. So, apparently he was benched on Saturday against the Quakes after on Wednesday he tweeted out that he was sad when you realize you're not as important as you thought. And, you know... Depending on how you look at this tweet, because there's different way you can look at this tweet. You can look at this as a very negative way and saying that Kaku is being selfish, the fact that he only cares about himself. Or you can look at it as said that you kind of maybe feel bad for him. And, you know, Chris Armas did say that on Saturday when he was asked why Kaku wasn't in the starting 11, he just said that it was because some internal affair that we had with Kaku and basically we're going to try to maybe resolve as soon as possible and obviously I like how Chris Armas handled that situation because usually when you're a coach and you have something you have a big issue that is kind of like off the field you don't really want to just immediately said what exactly the issue that would be kind of very unprofessional but as for Kaku you know this is pro the reason why I he is kind of tweeting this out is that I'm guessing he is still very disappointed that he did not go to Klupa America. Uh, remember, Kaku, throughout this offseason, there was even a period that he didn't train with the team because he really wanted to go to Klupa America, but the Red Bulls and Klupa America couldn't agree in terms, and Kaku basically is stuck with the Red Bulls. And, you know, for the Red Bulls, they got a big decision to make event in these next maybe in the off season or maybe in, in the summer transfer window is that do they keep Kaku or not? Because it's clear that Kaku is not happy with the team and his performance wise hasn't been as good as when he burst into the scenes and yeah, we shall see what the Red Bulls do with this situation. And I know the Red Bulls pay a lot to get Kaku in the first place and obviously they want to make sure that when they do sell him, they have to at least make some profit out of this. But it's get to us to a point where if a player is kind of really unhappy with your club, then maybe you you either gonna have to talk to him about the situation and trying to hope that he can basically forget about the whole Club America situation, or the next best thing to do is that you just going to maybe have to sell him and maybe hopefully. I wouldn't say they would lose any profit out of this, but definitely not earn as much profit as you would have thought when you bought him just last year. Um, sticking with the Red Bulls, unfortunately, some more bad news for the Red Bulls, and this is not because I'm I'm salty about that game, and I'm all I'm just giving bad news to Red Bulls fan, but really they they do have some really bad news. It's been a crazy week for. The Red Bulls from losing to Santos Laguna uh, to the Kaku situation to obviously winning 4-1 against the Quakes. And now they have to deal with Florian Valet, who unfortunately he torn his ACL again for the second year in a row. And this time I believe he tore his left ACL. Uh, this happened in the 34th minute when I think it was Jutsen that was basically trying to slide challenge. And, of course, he got the ball, but, unfortunately, he also took out Valet. And, you know, when Valet, when they show the replay of that, it looked very ugly. Of the, the way Valet basically went down, and he, when he was kind of laying on the ground for a long time, you know that this could be a very serious injury. And, most likely, it's either going to be a torn ACL or maybe a broken leg. And, indeed, of course, it's a torn ACL, and... Yeah, certainly I wish him a very speedy recovery. You know, this is really sad. The fact that not only he torn his ACL, but this is the second year in a row he has done that. And any time when you recover from an ACL injury, it's obviously tough. But to try to recover it again, that makes it even doubly tougher. So certainly I wish Valid a speedy recovery. And hopefully when he does come back, he will come back as stronger as when he suffered this ACL injury. Um, sticking with injury news, uh, Demarcus Beasley also will be out for four to six weeks after a knee surgery. So, of course, he suffered this knee injury back in that CCL second leg game between Tiguez and the Dynamo. And, you know, certainly for Beasley, I mean, 
we always talk about how he is kind of like the ageless wonder and the fact that he is probably going to recover this injury very fast and when he does come back he's going to get to full speed ahead but really all kidding aside in terms of those talk those kind of things that we say about Demarcus Beasley you know it's getting to a point where this is usually the time when when um you know Beasley obviously he's 36 and he's playing in his 20th year in his soccer professional career and usually this is the time where his body is going to start to slow down and if he does continue to suffer some injury then yeah it looked like most likely Beasley is going to it's going to be a matter of time before he does retire and if he does retire man what a career he has he's definitely going to be a future hall hall of fame in in this in this US soccer hall of fame and you know the thing that he has done for not only for the Dynamo but also for the U.S. men's national team. I mean, this guy played in five World Cup. That is insane. Not a lot of player in the world would be able to represent their nation and play for in five World Cup. Some players are just lucky to be in one World Cup. This guy has gone to five of them. That is just incredible. And you know, hopefully he'll recover this injury and be like the DeMarcus Beasley like he was about 20 years ago but something tells me if he does continue to suffer some injury and he has had some injury problem in the past then it is really getting close where Beasley might be thinking about hanging up the boots despite all the talks about how he's an ageless wonder he's gonna still play even though when he's 107 years old um, but Finally, in terms of the news of the week, um, there is a report that CONCACAF and Kami Bo could merge together in a World Cup qualifier. Now, this is not the first time that this news was mentioned. I believe a couple of years ago, they basically talk about the same thing. And guess what happened? The talk, of course, broke down. Um, but it's, it's always something that it's kind of like fresh in the mind in terms of CONCACAF and Kami Bo. They always talk about how they want to merge together. It's kind of similar to the whole MLS and Liga MX situation where there might be a talk of potentially we might create a Super League in North America where MLS and Liga MX team kind of merge together. But obviously that never really happened and all we did now is basically have the 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 oh god what, what was that that cup call i'm just gonna call it the super cup but i couldn't think of it on the oh the comp in this cup that's what it's called where the best liga mx team that won the title will be facing against the the best team in the u.s that won mos cup and you know it's the same thing with, with this, and it will be very interesting to see how the format will be if this actually does happen. Because Comibo, of course, have 10 teams. Uh, CONCACAF, I believe, have like around 40 teams, although usually they they probably will, will bring... I, I wonder, will they basically include all 43 teams, and then basically they can do something that Europe and also Asia, and I believe even Africa do, where... They group them up into different groups and then maybe the top two or top three team of course will be going to the world cup remember the world cup is going to be expanding to 48 teams and that could happen as soon as 2022 so if this does happen maybe i think it might be top four teams that that of course is that in that group is going to be moving on into the world cup but we shall see how this is going to do and whether or not if this report is going to be like last time we're just going to fizzle out or maybe there is some real interest that CONCACAF and Kami Bo is going to merge together and basically kind of form form their own kind of super league in terms well I wouldn't say super league but more like super qualifying where you know both region with all those teams are going to just come together and basically you know at that point I wonder how many spots would FIFA of course give us i think most likely it's going to be at least 12 that they're going to give us because i know in call bowl there's five teams that well there's four teams that goes to the world cup and earn automatic spot the fifth team goes through a playoff and in conky cav it's the same thing there's there's four teams that go to the world cup the fifth team goes to a playoff so you could potentially have 10 teams at that and knowing the world cup is going to be expanding to 20 
to, or not 20, 48 team that is. Most likely there's going to be at least 12 or even 14 kind of spots that is up for grabs. But either way, that is pretty much it for all the news. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about these news. Have I missed any important news that I wasn't, wasn't able to talk about here on on this video and, and didn't write it down on the board. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I, of course, will see you guys next time.